hear me, for I am the red glowing angry cat frenzy living tornado demon foe. Alright, what am I doing? I just want to show you guys a really cool, fun, powerful title update 5 build, and I... I just... I'm sorry. Hello, my fellow hunters! Welcome to something that I will officially dub... Very cool. This is a lot going on, and it's a lot of fun to pilot, and you will reign triumphant upon any monster that would dare even think of the notion of maybe trying to consider attacking you, as you effortlessly shred it to pieces in a kind of fashion, you know? You might already know where I'm going with this, you might have even experimented with it yourself, but if you don't know, well, you're about to know. So, we have Jewel Blades, and of course, we have new Amatsu's Heaven Scent. This is a match made in Heaven Scent, as obviously infinite stamina and sharpness on Jewel Blades is ridiculously good, and really, it's the best weapon for these benefits perhaps tied with the bow when it comes to the stamina portion. In any case, it of course lets you just kinda go mental with the Jewel Blades already enhanced demon mode super slidey dodge. That's very, very nice. But of course, I don't just leave things at nice, I want to push them to the limits and break hunting in the best of ways. So of course, when we return to our switch skills and we swap demon mode for feral demon mode... Rawr! God, I'm, I'm, I'm so... I'm so badass. Haha, <laughs> yeah. You get the dodge changed. It's more taxing on your resources, a shorter distance, but you get to do a couple three bonus hits on the monster as you pass through them in and around them. So you might be having a Oh, because when you have heaven sent, all the negatives get taken away here. Well, except the shorter distance, but that's where combining this with evade extender comes in. Add in a little bit of evade window too, so you're just essentially completely untouchable, as you're just accidentally massively iframe evading every attack the monster does, and well... Oh yeah. It's all coming together. But of course, that's the core strategy, that's the shell. We are going to then take this and make it as potently powerful as possible. So as you're now seeing, yeah, you can essentially just play this build by just getting heaven sent and then just dashing around and through and back and forth, around and in and out the monster, shake it all about, do the hokey cokey, you know, until you win. And that's all well and good, and it is all well and good, and uh, you uh, can uh, kill in, you know, sub-20 minutes, Risen Shagaru Megala. That's fantastic to say this is what you're doing. But, of course, you don't have to just do that, and it's honestly perhaps better if you don't. Because you can nicely weave in sort of normal-ish jewel blades. Because you are so mobile and so fast, you can exploit every single little window the monster gives you for some just extra little nicks, occasionally the odd spiral slash when you get it down, and so on and so forth, weaving in more damage. That is definitely how I would recommend playing this, and it's certainly how I do. The amount of time I can just instantly be at Shagaru's tail getting in some extra dinks while he's finishing up at a move or forgetting about my existence as I'm too fast is ridiculous and it really adds to this. If you're actually, you know, a good Jewel Blades player using this concept, although I love the weapon, I'm certainly very rusty on it, well, I imagine you can do even more. But the core concept here is simple. Infinite stamina, feral demon mode, zipping around the monster, dodging every attack with evade extender and evade window, fueled by said infinite stamina. You can then use any opening that 
ungodly mobility gives you to pour in extra, you know, normal dual blade shenanigans, and it just results in absolute greatness, but more than anything, it is chiefly one of the most fun ways to hunt I have ever experienced. I tried to make this happen back, I think, in base rise by combining every stamina skill, but the issue there was the damage was really terrible, and even with every stamina skill, you still couldn't do this for that long, so you really do need this infinite stamina and it is a blessing from our calamity storm god Amatsu. So how are we actually powering this? Well technically you could do a element build for each element in this style but I like to keep it simple with pure raw and a bit of poison on top as poison really adds a lot of damage when you're doing this predominantly feral demon mode dash damage. Damage. So, of course, we're using Lucent Nagakuga Jewel Blades, as they are very much the most potent ones for the job, and we are setting them up like this. Now, you may notice that I am not increasing the size of the Rampage slot to a level 2. Well, that's because, again, with the way that we're playing here, you can actually get away with simply using the level 1 slot on a Palico Rally Rampage decoration, and then use two effective damaging palicos that will add a lot of output to your hunt while you're just dashing through the monster with the feral demon damage. You want one fighter set up like this and then one bombardier set up like this, each equipped with the weapon that has the most amount of element that the monster is weakest to, and you will be away. Now that said, Again, if you want to weave in more extra normal jewel blades, then yes, upgrade the size of the rampage uh, slot, put in the anti-wyvern decoration that matches the monster you're going after, and bring whatever buddies you want, that is fine too. Past that then, let's actually set up the armor here. It is all Amatsu except for the waist, which is Risen Shagaru Magala. This gives us a really solid base to work with, with what we're after here. The Amatsu helmet just giving all of a Vade window is obviously insanely efficient for this set. Talisman-wise, you're essentially needing to get the best build-up boost talisman that you can get your hands on. Ideally, all three ranks. The speed sharpening's wasted here because of the Amatsu infinite sharpness, but all of the build-up boost is where it's at. If you can't get it from your talismans and you'd rather use something like this, 3 attack boost, Kridai 3-3, then use your curious crafting to get your build-up boost. Past that, you can add in the rest of Coalescence that we'll get to, or or any kind of comfort utility or damaging skills you uniquely want. I've not really gone crazy with Curious Crafting here to leave it very much open for you guys, so uh, choose whichever way round works for you. Curious your build-up boost, use whichever talisman and readjust decorations accordingly, or talisman for build-up boost, and whatever you feel like from your Curious Crafting. Once we decorate it all up, we end up with this magnificent skill list. Full attack boost, full crit eye, we've got that evade window, Crit Boost, Winx Exploit, the Evade Extender. The Kashala Blessing, which is a quick note, is really useful as we will take a little bit of damage from the Frenzy. We will take the odd hit every now and then. You can't perfectly dodge everything, at least I can't. And when you get back into Infinite Stamina Mode and back into dodging around, the Kashala Blessing will just nicely tick you up back to full health, which is just a lovely bit of comfort when you're playing like this. You can also just use a Poison Attack if you want, or any other one slot fillers you prefer. Bloodlust is here too as it's a very nice way to get consistent extra damage as well as proccing coalescence once every time you clear it. Yes, technically speaking we overcap affinity by 15% but the thing is, Bloodlust is not always up and because of the way we're dashing through every part of the monster, you are not going to be consistently hitting weak spots like you would in a normal build in a normal playstyle so most of the time that affinity isn't actually wasted as Bloodlust affinity is pure anywhere affinity, unlike weakness exploits, you know, only weak zone affinity. But again, you can very much tool this to your advantage. The main purpose of today in this build is, hey, the Vade Window, the Vade Extender, Feral Demon Mode, and Heaven Sent is amazing. And this is the direction I've taken it in. 
Then we get, of course, the build-up boost, uh, the heaven sent, a bit of coalescence, and then just a bit of powder mantle from my curious crafting, which all adds to the damage too. And there you kind of have it. If you want the quick maths on this, 390 raw on the weapon, add in the attack, the uh, bloodlust uptime, the coalescence uptime, we get to around 419. Multiply that up through the attack 7, uh, the affinity and the crit boost, the purple sharpness, the build-up boost, we get to just under 1000, and of course, all of the many much poison that the monster will essentially be permanently suffering while uh, fighting you in this setup and that works out really really well so yeah please try this because it is awesomely enjoyable just constant zipping maximum speed you can't touch me as you get free hits in for the simple act of dodging there is nothing that you cannot just whittle down while evading everything that it does honestly accidentally and passively just spam dodge back and forth through the monster and you'll just kill it it's that good it's that simple and i'm so glad that this is now finally all the way to the final major title update of Sunbreak possible. Oh yes. Let me know what you think. Like if you enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more. Consider supporting the channel on Patreon down below. And of course, let me know what weapons you'd like to see tooled up for title update 5 in the coming weeks. A good boy. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is, uh, goodbye.